for a moment of silence and a pledge to the flag. I'd like to call the public hearing to order. Please note uh, the location of all five exits here, there, 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 and I believe here. Okay, would the clerk please read the notice of public hearing? And the clerk may dispense with the reading of the boundary description because Commissioner Church from the Planning Department will uh, review the map with us. Notice of public hearing of the Orange County Legislature. Pursuant to New York State Town Law Section 73, alteration of town boundaries with respect to a petition for the division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature and the town of Monroe. Notice is hereby given that the Orange County Legislature will hold a public hearing for the purposes of soliciting public comments on Tuesday, August 15, 2017, at 6.30 p.m. at the Central Valley Elementary School Auditorium, 45 Route 32, Central Valley, New York, 10917, and continuing thereafter on Wednesday, August 16, 2017, at 6.30 p.m. at the Bias Rachel Paradise Hall, 5 Israel Zupnik Drive, Monroe, New York, 10950. With respect to a town law Article 5 petition for division of a town of Monroe, County of Orange, New York, to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the county legislature and town of Monroe, filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on September 12, 2016, and an amendment thereof filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on July 10, 2017, changing the name of the proposed new town to the town of Palm Tree and revising the legal common boundary description and map by reducing the acreage of land, all of which are available on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com. Exhibit A, the Town of Palm Tree Common Boundary Description. Preamble, the new Town of Palm Tree Boundary Description incorporates all of the village of Kiris Joel in its entirety and assumes that the parcels and land area as part of the recently approved 164 acre annexation of unincorporated town of Monroe into the village of Kiris Joel are currently a legal part of the village of Kiris Joel. Thus, the proposed town of Palm Tree would consist of this new amended Kiris Joel boundary described in recent annexation documents plus the area from the 27 parcels listed in the attached table in addition to road area. Generally, these parcels are located in the northwestern portion of the town of Monroe, north of New York State Route 17, west and southwest of the village of Kiris Joel, as depicted on the attached map. The acreage of the parcels and adjacent road area is approximately 56 plus or minus acres. The new town of Palm Tree acreage will include these 56 plus or minus acres plus the 889 plus or minus acres currently a part of the village of Kiris Joel. The total acreage of a new town of Palm Tree will be 945 plus or minus acres. Written comments on the petition will be accepted through the close of business Thursday, August 17, 2017, and directed to Jean M. Rampin, clerk of the Orange County Legislature, or by email to jrampin at orangecountydub.com. Further notice is hereby given that copies of the petition for the division and exhibits are available for inspection during usual business hours at the Office of the Clerk of said County Legislature, 15 Matthew Street, Suite 203, Goshen, New York, 10924, and on the Orange County website at orangecountygov.com. This notice was published in the July 24th, July 31st, August 7th, and August 14th issues of the Times Herald Record at the direction of the town clerk of the town of Monroe. Also, notice a public hearing regarding environmental assessment review of the proposed division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree and the town of Monroe pursuant to town law article five. 
Notice is hereby given that the Orange County Legislature will hold a public hearing for the purposes of soliciting public comments on Tuesday, August 15, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. at the Central Valley Elementary School Auditorium, 45 Route 32, Central Valley, New York, 10917, and continuing thereafter on Wednesday, August 16, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. at the Bias Rachel Paradise Hall, 5 Israel Zupnik Drive, Monroe, New York, 10950. With respect to the environmental assessment review of a petition pursuant to Town Law Article 5 for the division of the Town of Monroe to create the new Town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the County Legislature and the Town of Monroe under consideration by the Orange County Legislature. The petition was filed with the Clerk of the Orange County Legislature on September 12, 2016 and an amendment thereto was filed with the clerk on July 10, 2017, changing the name of the proposed new town to the town of Palm Tree and revising the legal common boundary description and map by reducing the acreage of land from 382 plus or minus acres plus the village of Kiris Joel as it existed at the time of the filing of the petition on September 12, 2016 to 56 plus or minus acres plus the village of Kiris Joel inclusive 165 plus, I'm sorry, 164 plus or minus acres of approved annex lands. Written comments on the environmental assessment form will be accepted through close of business Thursday, August 17, 2017, and should be directed to David E. Church, AICP, Orange County Commissioner of Planning, Department of Planning, 1887 County Building, 124 Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, or by email to dchurch at orangecountygov.com. Further notice is hereby given that original documents, petition for division, exhibits, amendments, maps, and the full environmental assessment form are available for inspection during usual business hours at the Office of the Clerk of the said County Legislature, 15 Matthew Street, Suite 203, Goshen, New York, 10924, and copies thereof are available on the Orange County website at www.orangecountygov.com. This notice was published in the August 9th issues of the Hudson Valley Press, Walk Hill Valley and Mid-Hudson Times, and the August 11th issues of the Orange County Post, Warwick Advertiser, Monroe Photo News, The Chronicle, The News of the Highlands, The Cornwall Local, and The Gazette. Thank you, Jean. Good evening, my name is L. Stephen Brescia. I'm chairman of the Orange County Legislature and I represent District 9. I welcome you here to this public hearing on the petition for the division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of Palm Tree or other suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature and the Town of Monroe. The Legislature will hear public comment, comment tonight. Speakers will be allowed three minutes and we're going to st uh, stick to that just as we did last night. Um, let's see. We'll ex gladly accept written comments before the close of business tomorrow, Thursday, August 17, 2017. I'll introduce the legislators that are present here for the public hearing. At the end of the table, we have representing District 1, which is Central Valley and Kiris Joel, good part of the town of Monroe, uh, Michael Amo. Okay, uh, Paul Ruskevich, representing uh, Minnesink and parts of Warwick, Wayanda, and other areas. Um, Katie Benelli, representing parts of the town of Woodbury, Blooming Grove, and uh, I think that's it. What's that? And I think parts of the Curtis Joel too. Yes. yes, sorry. And Myrna Chemnitz, who represents most of the town, a good portion of the town of Monroe. <laughs> Barry Cheney, who represents the town of Warwick and the town of Tuxedo. Uh, John Vero, who represents parts of the town of Warwick and the whole town of Chester. Matt Turnbull, who represents a piece of the town of Blooming Grove, the whole town of Hamptonburg, and a part of the town of New Windsor. Kevin Hines, who represents the entire town of Cornwall, and I believe a piece of Blooming Grove and a, a small piece of New Windsor, correct? Okay. Um, legislator Tom Fagione, who represents the entire town of Deer Park and uh, the entire city of Port Jervis. Represent uh, legislator Chris Ekus, who represents the entire uh, part of the town of New Windsor, and where else? That's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, Lee Benton, who represents part of the a piece, small piece of the town of Montgomery and a good portion of the town of Newburgh. Legislator Mike and Agnes Dacus, who represents the town of Montgomery and the town, <laughs> the groupies are back. <laughs> town of Newburgh and the town of Montgomery, I'm sorry. Legislator Roseanne Sullivan, who represents a good portion of the town of Walk Hill and the entire town of Crawford. Legislator Mike Paduke, who represents a good portion of the, 
the uh, biggest portion of the town of Walk Hill, I believe. Uh, legislator uh, Jeff Berkman, who represents a, good, a large portion of the city of Middletown, and Legislator Jim O'Donnell, who represents a small piece of Blooming Grove, uh, way, way on, and a good portion of the town of Goshen. The entire portion of the town of Goshen, I'm sorry. And we are missing Legislator Jim DeSalvo, who will be coming a little bit later. Okay, without further ado, I'll introduce Dave Church, the commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry, Antoinette Gluzak Reed, our county legislative attorney. Okay. Thank you, Chairman Brescia. Um, I'll just go over the uh, petition briefly with you. Uh, the petition for the division for uh, the town of Monroe, County of Orange, New York, pursuant to town law article five, to create a new town in the town of Monroe was filed with the clerk of the Orange County Legislature on September 12th, 2016. And an amendment thereto was filed on July 10th, 2017, requesting to change the name of the proposed new town to the town of Palm Tree and revising the legal common boundary description and map by reducing the acreage of the land. Documents are available on the Orange County website at, um, at, on the Orange County website. The petition purports to be signed by duly qualified electors of the town of Monroe, Orange County, New York, representing not less than 5% of the total votes cast for governor in the town at the last general election of state offices. The petition is comprised of 183 pages containing a total of approximately 2,420 signatures. Attached to the petition are the following exhibits. Exhibits A and B, the meets and bounds description, and a map depicting the new town of Palm Tree. Exhibit C, a statement of indebtedness for the town of Monroe for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2014, as certified by Town of Monroe Chief Fiscal Officer Peter Martin. Exhibit D, statement of reasons for change to separate the village of Kirstrowell and its immediate vicinities of 56 plus or minus acres from the town of Monroe uh, by establishing a new town of Palm Tree so as to allow both communities to separately coexist based upon cultural and family lifestyles, educational institutions, community facilities, and infrastructure needs, political and governmental autonomy. In accordance with New York State law, the Orange County Commissioners for the Board of Elections calculated that the petition requires the signatures of 541 qualified electors of the town of Monroe to be valid. No specific or general objections were filed to the petition, but for a letter dated October 6, 2016, by the law firm Zarin and Steinmetz, representing Preserve Hudson Valley. On October 11, 2016, the clerk issued a certificate of the filing of the petition, which was posted on the Orange County website. On July 10, 2017, the clerk of the legislature received a letter dated July 10, 2017 from petitioner's agent Gedalia Segedin, amending the petition by withdrawing exhibits A, legal description, and B, outlining the boundaries of the division of lands from the town of Monroe to create a new town comprised of the village of Kirsch Joel, inclusive of the approved annexed 164 acres of land annexed and an additional 56 plus or minus acres. Agent Segedin also requested the name of the new town, the Town of Palm Tree, and removed the name of Town of North Monroe. Environmental Review. On May 15, 2017, agents, uh, petitioner's agent submitted part one of a full environmental assessment form, along with a letter from the law firm of Whiteman, Osterman, and Hanna, LLP, stating in quotes, it is the petitioner's position that the county legislature's determination on the Article 5 petition allowing the proposition to go to the electorate for a vote on town formation is not an action subject to review under State Environmental Quality Review Act. On June 1, 2017, by resolution number 123 of 2017, this legislature preliminarily typed the action as an unlisted action under seeker and requested the Orange County Commissioner of Planning to review part one of the full EAF and to prepare part two and a draft part three of said form for review and consideration by the rules enactments and intergovernmental committee at its June 21st, 2017 
meeting. Commissioner Church revised the EAF in accordance with the amended petition and submitted that document to the clerk of the legislature on August 2, 2017. The full EAF is available for public viewing on the Orange County website. Notice of this public hearing regarding the EAF was published in the Orange County official newspapers as reported by the clerk. The Orange County Legislature is also in receipt of a letter dated August 11, 2017 by Richard B. Golden, Esquire, an attorney writing on behalf of a local, a local municipal group opposing the Kyrus Joel annexation, informing the Legislature of the importance of conducting a thorough environmental review prior to the Legislature's decision on the pending petition to form the new town of Palm Tree and requesting that each of the participating municipalities be listed as an interested agency. Uh, resolution number 124 of 2017 set this public hearing. In accordance with town law section 73, the clerk of the town of Monroe caused publication of the notice of this public hearing in the Times Herald record as reported by the clerk of the legislature. All public hearing comments, correspondence, and documents will be considered by all legislators at the Rules Enactments and Intergovernmental Relations meeting on August 23, 2017. The meeting will be held at the Orange County Emergency Operations Center, 22, 22 Wells Farm Road, Goshen, New York, at approximately 3.30 p.m. Thank you, Chairman Fresha. Thank you. Next up, I'll introduce David Church, Commissioner of Planning for the County of Orange to overview for an overview of the map and environmental review. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my office is providing technical support to the county legislature in the review of the proposed new town of Palm Tree action. This evening, I'll quickly review the map and layout of the proposed new town, and I'll also review the status of the environmental review for the proposal. Maps of the proposed new town are on display in the back of the room, as well as right here in the entrance um, at the front of the room. We've also printed some, uh, we've got some print copies for distribution, and as previously noted, uh, the map of the proposal, along with a full draft environmental impact statement, uh, are online at the county website, and also can be reviewed at the county legislative offices. I can also provide copies on request. Um, as shown in the map, highlighted in color, um, the new town, as proposed, consists of the current village, Pierce Joel, um, which includes the 164 acres annexed in 2016, as well as an additional plus or minus 56 acres shown highlighted in yellow um, that will be added at various locations, mostly just west of the current village uh, near Seven Springs Road. I also note um, there's a narrow strip of land included on the east side of the current existing village that many people have asked about. Uh, this land, or strip of land, is included to ensure that lands remaining in the existing town of Monroe remain contiguous uh, should the new town be established. As previously stated, the county has moved to treat uh, this proposal before the legislature as an unlisted action under the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act. As such, my office has prepared a full environmental assessment form in draft consisting currently of nearly 30 pages of form plus an 18-page narrative. That form and narrative document are posted online at the county website and are available for review in the legislative and planning departments and are also included on as an attachment on the online public notice for this hearing. Our review through the environmental assessment is focused on a set of potential environmental impacts that I highlight here. First, the county-owned and operated Gonzaga Park is immediately contiguous to this current proposal and is highlighted in green on the maps provided. Second, the Long Path Highlands Trail is an important regional asset connecting the George Washington Bridge to the Catskill and Adirondack Forest Preserves. This recreational trail currently traverses Gonzaga Park and follows portions of Seven Springs Road before heading through Orange and Rockland Company lands to join the county-owned Heritage Rail Trail. This trail is identified as in need of protection. Third, there are documented water quality impacts in the unnamed tributary 
of the Ramapo River, which drains most of the watershed of the proposed new town. And lastly, uh, the environmental, the draft assessment documents a set of potential impacts associated with growth and development that can be predicted. This is based on preliminary build-out analysis we have completed using current assumptions about land use, zoning, and demographic trends. These potential impacts are a particular concern related to a set of infrastructure service needs, uh, most significantly associated with the provision of water and sewer supply services. Comments on this assessment are welcome and are a part of this public hearing. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Church. Um, before we start with the public hearing, we have a lot of empty seats in the front row that are reserved for elected officials. So if you're an elected official or the county attorney's office or John McCary from the county, you can come up to the front row, please. Uh, I see Steve Welly out there, Bruce Chichester, Tony Cardone, Brendan Coyne, Jerry, um, Mike McGinn, I think I saw out there, I'm not sure. Okay, why don't you guys come up to the front row because there's a lot of empty seats up here and they're reserved for elected officials, correct, Mayor? Mayor Weeder's already got his front row seat, so. <laughs> and Gedalia's got his front row seat, so. Don Nickel, the, the attorneys even have front row, so. Okay, uh, the, the uh, clerk will introduce the speakers. Uh, put, remember, you have three minutes. We don't have a 15 second grace period after that, so just three minutes strict, okay? Thank you, Jean. You want to call off the first name? At this time, we have 29 individuals signed up to speak. The first will be Sue Ann Vogelsberg, followed by Marie Martin, and third, Ed Kapalko. This is, oh, is it on? Yep. Go now, start? Okay. My name is Sue Ann Vogelsberg, and I've lived at the same address and paid taxes to the town of Blooming Grove for the past 38 years, despite having a Monroe phone number and mailing address. I've been here so long, I even remember when Katie Benelli first ran for Blooming Grove Town Supervisor. Our daughters were in Girl Scouts at the time. Over the years, I've seen the ever-changing and enlarging borders of the village of Curious Joel. All during these enlargements, there was one constant. This community remained religiously segregated, a violation of our Constitution. Many of our county legislators have stood by and allowed this to happen, which has brought us to this point in time. Those that have had the courage to stand up unfortunately seem to pay the price politically. Help me to understand how we can allow this religiously segregated town to form knowing that it is unconstitutional, just as the Curious Joel Union Free School District will continue to be. We have an opportunity here to redo the past 40 plus years and plan for a future where all of our communities can mutually exist. Why does our county expend time, energy, and finances on various studies such as this, the Mid-Hudson Sustainability and Smart Growth of March, uh, March 2016, to guide its communities in planning for the future and yet selectively enforces them? Just take a drive through the village of Kiris Joel and see for yourself. In this new in this new town will in this new town will interior fire response continue to be done by neighboring volunteer fire companies will the county owned gonzaga park remain available to all county residents despite being within the borders of this new town as a homeowner with a well will my right to water be impacted by this neighboring overdevelop neighboring overdevelopment Will this new town continue to use the state police for law enforcement versus establishing their own police force? Will this new town open its doors and promote tourism like our county executive recommends and add those county sales tax dollars to our county coffers as other Orange com County communities do? I could go on and on, but, it will mat it, but will it matter as I am unable to vote on this important issue as I am registered to vote in the town of Blooming Grove? It doesn't matter that my town was given away by United Monroe and KJ as part of their deal without any input from Blooming Grove citizens. How can United Monroe and KJ know what's best for my town? This is a big deal, not just locally, but countywide. So despite home rule, all county residents should be allowed to decide by voting. More comprehensive research is needed, and I strongly encourage our county legislators to withhold any decision until such research and analysis is completed and presented to all county residents for their consideration. Thank you. Good 
evening. My name is Marie Martin, and I'm a lifelong resident here in the village of Monroe, born and raised right here. So over the last number of years, I've seen enormous transition. I consider myself just an average resident in the village of Monroe. As a law-abiding citizen, I work hard, I try to keep my property intact, I patronize the local establishments, both in Monroe and the surrounding communities, and I try most of all to make just and, decision, just and moral decisions in my day, not any different than any one of you. But my surroundings in the village that I live with, for the most part, are decisions made by a body of people that is far beyond my control. I'm not politically savvy, so therefore, I just get to live with the consequences of the decisions that are made by others. And as a result, I now sit at a red light in Monroe for at least five lights before I get to go through that light and proceed. I see mountainside one after another cleared out and getting ready to make more room for dense housing and more population. And making a left-hand turn in Monroe almost at any given hour is next to impossible. The road capacity is only one aspect of Monroe's issues. Equally important are the sewer, the water, and the environmental issues. So thankfully, through the efforts of many people, they brought us here to a place where we can have the chance to change things, that, the change that we're looking for in Monroe, because we don't always have the option of leaving this town. It's our lives. And actually, at the end of the day, there's no promises that our vote will end up yielding anything different than the one you would come up with. But I can guarantee that it'll be an informed decision and the best one that we know how at any given time. There's one other thing that I do in Monroe. I pray. And tonight, I'm going to pray that you, as the legislative body that has been elected and entrusted with the task of making yet another influential decision for the town of Monroe and for the surrounding communities as well, that you will have the courage and the wisdom to make a moral and just decision that will achieve the very oath that you took to serve the people. Thank you. Good evening. My name's Ed Capalco. I'm a resident of the village of Monroe. Uh, I only can urge you to vote no on this petition to form a new town. And as a uh, bookkeeping note, this building is not handicapped accessible. I don't know how you could have a public meeting in here. Thank you. The next speaker, Barbara Hanley, followed by Andy Garrison, followed by Dan Burke. Good evening, I'm Barbara Hanley. I'm a 31-year resident of South Blooming Grove and a member of Preserve Blooming Grove. After listening last night to the many speakers, I believe that most of us from Monroe, Blooming Grove, Woodbury, and other surrounding municipalities who have spoken both for and against the development of a new town are really of one mind on most of the issues. The fear of the KJ leadership's desire to grow beyond what the water and sewage capacities are, with the expectation that the surrounding areas must accommodate these unplanned needs. The leadership's lack of concern for the environment, with loss of green areas, and with it, the beauty of our homes and county. This and more. However, these issues are not impacted by the development of a town. They remain if we change or if we don't. These issues remain in the hands of our legislature, the DEC, the courts, and our own, our own vigilance. The only issue before us is whether Monroe and our municipalities are better off losing 220 acres and a border change, or losing 13,000 plus acres and the same border issues within about the same time period due to the growth of the block vote. Shall we wait to decide, gather more information, which is usually my approach? Within weeks, though, I believe 
The Court of Appeals will determine the fate of the 164 acres. No matter the result, it will render the moot the whole process. There will be no bar bargaining chip. It took 40 years to find a way to compromise. There will be no second opportunity to make this deal. Monroe will become KJ's town, larger than Palm Tree, but with no name change, only continuous litigation. Please, give Monroe the opportunity to make this critical, time-sensitive decision. Vote yes for the referendum. Andy Garrison. I'm a volunteer for the New York New Jersey Trail Conference and I more specifically work on the Long Path. The Long Path has been in, in existence since 1931 and the New York New Jersey Trail Conference became involved with it in 1960. I've personally been involved with the Long Path after backpacking the whole thing since 2004. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. Now I'll pick up where I was. I spend many hours on the trail and also work to preserve the land that it crosses. The Long Path starts at the 175th Street train station in Manhattan and ends in the Adirondack Park at the Northville Placid Trail. People as far away as France and Spain have backpacked the, the entire Long Path. Currently, the Long Path and Coal Line High, Highlands Trail leave the woods of the Gonzaga Park at the entrance on County Route 44 after crossing Crossing Route 17, it follows the Heritage Trail, as you heard earlier, another county park. This is precisely what long distance trails do. They link together public open spaces. These two long distance trails are each identified in New York State's open space plan for protection, as are many areas that, pa that they pass through. This particular region is in identified in the open space plan as the New York Highlands region. West of the Hudson in Orange County, it includes the area between Storm King Mountain south into New Jersey, which includes Scunny Monk and Goose Pond State Park. Currently, the Long Path leaves Gonzaga Park and for a short distance follows Seven Springs Road, which has two large wooded parcels on each side of it that I'll add often need to be cleaned up. To the east of the road, it, it is pr proposed Town of the Palm Tree. The area currently has one, ac one acre zoning within the town of Monroe. Clearly, much more density will be allowed within the new town. It is currently three acre zoning west of Seven Springs Road. The village of KJ own, currently own, holds restricted convicted easements and development agreements on at least two of these parcels. These agreements filed at the county's clerk office include the village of KJ supplying water to those parcels and restricts the right to use on-site water. For this reason, we are seriously concerned that all of the land will at some point be heavily developed, whether it's in Palm Tree or Monroe. Um, we ask that all parties involved work with us to include a preserved corridor through this area. It's the vital link for the long path. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, uh, Chairman Brescia and our county legislators. I'm Dan Burke, elder statesman. I believe the people of Curious Joe should have a rightful place among the towns of New York State. This is a momentous, historic, grand step forward, and it must be done right. The plan before you now is a good beginning. Missing from this agreement, pipeline support from the Orange County government and all our neighbors to tap into that Catskill water that New York City had agreed to uh, make available to any town here in the Hudson Valley. KJ needs clean water, not tanker trucks. Woodbury needs clean water. Harriman needs clean water. These municipalities should participate in financing and in sharing the Catskill water. Also, it makes no sense to agree to 56 acres upon which homes and new families can be built, and then to continue legal and physical blocking of the pipeline, which brings the water those families need. Missing, a settlement of the lawsuit over the Mountainville Well and Trout Well Field and the protection of Woodbury Creek. 
and the three other lawsuits. No, annexes, no annexation moratorium for Woodbury. People of Woodbury should, will be shut out in November. Who could blame them if they demanded their county legislators shut this down until it could be renegotiated with Woodbury at the table? Same for Cornwall. Gedalia Zegadin and Woodbury have begun talks. Our local county legislators should be sitting at that table and, and leading those discussions. Leverage. The leverage has been frittered away. The political group that lost the election of 2013 has negotiated to remove the votes of the group that defeated them in 2013. Not much more. And they were asking you to submit this question to the same three-block vote that they are disparaging. What is the leverage? KJ wants a new independent town and is ready to make concessions to obtain it. United Monroe wants to extricate themselves from the multiple lawsuits without any court-ordered financial judgments upon them and are also ready to make concessions. Those concessions should be in place, in writing, before any vote on separation. Missing, an end to endless litigation. All the groups involved should sign on to a binding commitment to submit disputes to medi uh, medi uh, mediation and arbitration. Missing, a financial plan. Our good citizens of Curious Joel pay nearly $1 million in town property taxes and hundreds of thousands more in mortgage taxes. When a new town is formed, Palm Tree can budget for services and improvements and strong, and strong future for their families. But the citizens who will remain in the town of Monroe must know the financial truth. How do they absorb a $2 million annual hit until a financial plan is constructed and accepted, an intelligent, informed vote on separation is impossible. Missing, a clear review of the rights and protections for the KJ Alliance in the new town. Where is their Bill of Light rights? Missing, a review of the establish, establishment clause if the new town will be based on a shared culture and not a shared religion. That culture needs to be defined in the town's founding documents. What profits us to build a town that will be dismantled by the U.S. Supreme Court? Honorable legislators, state law rightly gives the county legislature oversight on the application for a new town. That oversight must be judiciously exercised. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker, Rocket Witham, followed by Christy Salmon, followed by Matt Higgins. Please speak, speak into the microphone clearly. Hello, my name is Brock Edwitham, and I am uh, but a three-year resident here in Monroe, and uh, already the issues and demographics are pretty obvious. We have to separate these two towns up. All the issues that have been mentioned here, constitutional, are very large. We live in the real world. That's a Supreme Court. Let that happen. Issues of more information are just that, more information. That's, as far as I'm concerned, kicking the can down the road, which governments love to do, and nothing gets done. All the information we're talking about will always be estimates, and estimates are estimates. You're not gonna know what it is until you play it out, and the devil is in the detail. This is a one issue, one issue only, separate the towns, give people more power to vote on those issues. The environmental issues, they're all strong. That's why we moved here. The water issues are all strong. None of that is going to be done by the town of Monroe at all, with Curious Joel or without. That's, again, in bigger issues, bigger jurisdictions. So what I'm seeing here is a fear, a fear of the unknown by a lot of people who are opposing this deal. They're afraid of what they don't know. And there's only one way you're gonna find out, by going there. Thank you. My name is Christy Salmon. I have an eight-year-old daughter who attends Pine Tree. I've been a part of this community since I was four years old. My father, Pat DeLiso, was the longtime MW football coach. I have deep roots here. I've seen Monroe Woodbury go from the coveted school district of Orange County to now having lower enrollment numbers for incoming kindergartners. While storefronts are empty and house values depreciate as people now look to Goshen, Cornwall, and Warwick as the place to raise a family, 
The block vote, along with the Monroe taxpayers not coming out to vote, share the responsibility for letting someone like Harley Doles run our board. I urge any of you to take a look at the footage from any one meeting. When I show people outside our community, they are baffled as to how a board can be so demeaning, rude, and accusatory to the people they supposedly represent. It's like a bad Saturday Night Live skit. And the truth is, they've only represented one side of the community, KJ. Today, we're asking for our voice back to be able to vote on the fate of the community we've invested so much in financially and for what we truly believe is in the best interest of our children. Our eyes are wide open now thanks to the efforts of United Monroe and honest people like Tony Cardone who simply love this town and want to preserve it. There's no need to wait for more information. We've had 10 years of it. We have case studies in Lakewood, New Jersey and Rockland showing the complete deterioration of communities and school districts. This isn't a conversation tonight about the environment which is how some of the people outside of Monroe have expressed fears yesterday. Environmental concerns will always be an issue regardless of the outcome of this separation discussion. This isn't about religion. Religion has only been raised on occasion to make members of the United Monroe Group appear anti-Semitic, and that's an unfair characterization. Monroe is full of Catholics, Jews, Muslims, Asians, African Americans, and we all have seemed to live in this community together up until now. Why? because we have all followed the rules and laws built to make this community a wonderful place for all parties who live in it. This separation is about the future of our children's education and whether they will be able to graduate from a school district that has allowed them to flourish and leave with the necessary tools and academic knowledge to succeed in this world. It's about giving our kids the opportunity to enjoy sports and extracurricular activities, which we can all attest in this room are a critical component to the people that they can become. The separation is a necessity for the political independence of Monroe. The school district will already be liable for the needs of the Hasidic children that do exist outside of Palm. But what does that look like without the separation? The increasing numbers from KJ and the dissidents who are developing land in the town of Monroe as we speak? That means in two years, KJ will have an overwhelming voting block, and there will be no MW school district. Monroe will be another place on the long list where the Hasidic community have gained complete control and bankrupt the school district. Let us be the judge on this issue. It's what democracy means in its most organic sense. Thank you. Matt Higgins. followed by Shamo Rubenstein, then Virginia Scott. Good evening, legislatures. My name is Matt Higgins. I'm from Woodbury. Um, I've been really torn about this whole thing. Um, at one point, I was for it, then I was against it, then I was for it. So this is a tough decision for all of you to make. Um, I don't believe you should rush this decision. I think it's too important to rush. And, uh, well, I want to say that the county planning department just drafted the part three of the EIS on 8717. Um, we haven't had a chance to review it. Again, this should not be rushed decision. And if you're going to make this decision, you should check everything. Um, it's a regional issue. Woodbury and Cornwall have a voice when we're not being heard, and that's wrong. Um, KJ doesn't comply with New York State municipal regulations according to your own planning, uh, you know, Orange County planning. Um, they don't comply with the EC or county regulations. And if you, believe, if you believe in the tooth fairy, you should believe KJ will abide by all, every bit of this deal. Uh, you should be very careful. Um, remember that pipeline that was 24 inches? or 18 inches, and then it was 24 now. Um, the EIF lists Mountainville as the water source. Now that is something that Cornwall and Woodbury both rely on, and it's in the middle of a lawsuit. So keep that in mind, because we're being tapped. Um, I don't believe the EIF is accurate for water usage on, or population statistics, and they're underestimated. Our aquifer that supports the Woodbury and or in Cornwall populace is in jeopardy 
already. And the Woodbury Creek, a creek that the 1,000 to 1,100 members of Black Rock rely on for fishing will go dry for two summer months as soon as KJ is allowed to tap 610,000 gallons per day from the Mountainville wells. Keep that in mind. Uh, we're being tapped out. And issuing a negative declaration was a mistake on the part of the county. The idea of using leverage is a sound one, and uh, the county should protect us all and use its leverage to protect Woodbury and Cornwall. And um, as I said, I was for this and against it. I don't get to vote on it. But keep us all in mind. Protect us all. Make sure we have water. Because I, don't, I think we're getting tapped out. Thank you. Shamil Rubenstein, Virginia Scott, Hello, my name is Virginia Scott and I've lived in Orange County my entire life. I live in Cornwall and um, my comments are respect to the town law article 5 petition for the division of the town of Monroe, Orange County, a county of Orange, New York, to create a new town, a palm tree. We can all agree how divisive this issue is. Why is that? It's about the law. Laws are written for many reasons. Most of the time, laws are written and applied to maintain a civil society and to ensure protections for all citizens. The issue before you is not one in isolation. This decision will impact all of Orange County in terms of our natural and financial resources. It should be the concern of all legislators to advocate for all citizens of Orange County. It is clear to me in sitting in committee meetings that not all the legislators were involved in the discussions. So how can an informed decision be made by each and every one of you without all the information? This will have a lasting impact on Orange County. For this reason, I am asking the Orange County Legislature to do the right thing to vote no on this petition and go back and do it the correct and lawful way to include all the local officials in this process. A formation of a new town is one that should not be made in haste or in fear or be taken lightly. Since this has not been done in over 50 years, laws of government are written and should be applied to all citizens, regardless of affiliations. In closing, I've heard a lot of arguments back, you know, to for, and, to for and against, but I just wanna say, no matter what, the law of government, the law of man applies to everyone. Thank you. The next speaker is Eileen Summerlad followed by Courtney Connolly, followed by Frank Borowski. Hello, my name is Eileen Summerlad. I live in the village of Monroe. My husband and I moved here without four children in 1974. I was expecting my fifth child at the time. We moved here because we wanted great schools, a friendly community, and open space, including a big backyard for our children to play. This was a few years before the village of Curious Joel was formed. Our children had a great childhood growing up in Monroe. They graduated from Monroe Woodbury Schools and received a great education. They participated in various sports such as football, track, cross country, and softball. Four of our children live in Monroe and one lives close by in Warwick. I have 11 grandchildren who have been part of the Monroe Woodbury school system. They are able to receive a wonderful education at Monroe Woodbury. They are also involved with the various sports and music programs offered by Monroe Woodbury. I am a retired registered nurse. In fact, I worked in Curious Joel 
and took care of thousands of babies in the baby nursery. I loved my job. Who wouldn't love to take care of newborn babies? I also got the opportunity to meet many wonderful Hasidic families at the nursery. Many of them were my coworkers. I even attended some of their weddings. This has nothing to do with religion. This is about good government and doing what is best for everyone. I've been following Monroe government. It's obvious to see that there isn't fair representation for all of Monroe citizens. There is a black vote and many of us want good, fair, and honest government. It was a breath of fresh air when Tony Cardone and Mike McGinn won the election almost two years ago. I am asking you please to say yes. Allow the Monroe residents to decide on the separation. Allow us to protect our school district. Allow us to be able to have freedom from the block vote. We want to protect our zoning and planning boards. You have the ability to help us. This is the right thing to do. Allow my grandchildren and their children to be able to grow up in this amazing town. Allow them to have the same opportunity that our children were given. Vote yes. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Courtney Conley and I'm an incoming sophomore at the Monroe Woodbury High School. Before I begin, I'd like to ask everyone to have the decency to not attack my family on the internet tomorrow and to know that I'm not being paraded around by anyone. I'm here for the sole purpose of voicing my opinion on a very serious matter that could predict my future. I'm an active member of the Monroe Woodbury Junior Varsity and Basketball teams, a volunteer of Unified Sports, and I'm an elected sophomore class senator. I'm fearful without separating, all of the above mentioned programs and honor classes that I'm a part of will be taken away. Where will my future be without being able to complete my studies? How will I be able to enter into a quality university or college? What will happen to the great community that is Monroe Woodbury? I'm fearful to think all of this could be gone because eight people didn't care enough to protect my future and allow my parents and the parents of Monroe to have the opportunity to decide their own children's future as well. If I could, I want you to close your eyes and imagine you are with your family and you're watching your son or daughter score the winning goal, or your grandchild is performing in the high school play, or they are receiving an academic achievement award. You can see it. You are proud. You are beaming with pride. You see the glory in your child's face as they are taking their last bow, being given high fives by their teammates, shaking the principal's hand, and now imagine it's all gone because eight of you said no. When you're making this decision, I want you to think about this one question I'm about to ask you. Will we be able to wake up on September 8th and every morning after and know what you did and everything in your power to protect the future and the fate of this beloved town? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, County Legislators. Uh, first of all, thank you for your time tonight. Uh, thank you for your time last night, um, and thank you for your service. Um, I'll be short and sweet. I don't have anything prepared. I've been a Village of Harriman trustee, now going on two years. I've also been a Harriman resident and Town of Monroe resident since 1994. A lot has changed in those years. This has been going on for many, many years. Um, this is about one thing. This is about the majority of you allowing the many thousands of residents of our community the ability to decide what's right for them in their future. Nothing more. We have mothers, fathers, single parents, guardians, but we have children in this community, some of which are so young, they have no clue of what's going on here. But depending on how you vote, they will know in years to come. I ask you all to try to separate any differences, any political views, any bias, and remember what your one vote is going to mean, and I ask you to vote yes to allow the residents to determine what's right for them and their families, and not just now, but going forward. When you go to vote in September, I want you to remember one number, eight. Because depending on how the voting goes, there may be seven votes for no. And one of you will be the possible eighth vote. 
Think about what that one single vote is going to mean to close to 23,000 residents outside of KJ. Not just the residents, their businesses, their futures, the school programs. You heard this young lady. One vote. One. Are you prepared to be that one? No. Because you may very well be. Think about the impact of what that one no could mean. That one no will impact lives for many, many years. And if you can live with that decision, then you're going to live with that decision. So I ask you to please think about it long and hard. Separate your differences. I've done my research. Everything leads me back to the same thing, that you must give the residents the ability to to, to say their piece, to vote. The environmental issues that you've heard will be the same issues that we have after you vote. Nothing's changed. So control what's controllable. Give the people the ability to vote. Allow them to decide what's right for them and their children. And if you, I, I implore the, you to do that, and I feel that you're going to make the right decision. Thank you. The next speaker is Seth Bader, followed by Emily Converse, followed by Christine Manson. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Seth Bader, and I've been a Town of Monroe resident for over 30 years. I have three children in, or soon to enter, the NW school system. Like most parents, my world begins and ends with my kids. For me, this is about them. I stand in strong support of giving the citizens of Monroe the chance to vote on the proposed referendum this fall. Last night, I attended the first of these two public hearings and listened to the many private citizens and elected officials speak. Out of all the difference in opinion, one thing rose very clearly. People have a difference in opinion. That night and tonight, everyone that mustered the courage to speak had an opportunity for their opinion to have a voice, an opportunity for a seat at the table. Even though many spoke, an even greater number didn't, they still deserve a voice on this matter, and giving them an opportunity for open debate and ultimately a vote provides it. As a father, it makes me wish my kids had accompanied me both of these nights to see people standing up for what they believe in. It's a right and a privilege we sometimes take so for granted as a citizen of a democratic nation. Given the facts known to me today, not only do I stand here tonight in support of the referendum, I also stand in support of separation, of political autonomy, and of a future for my kids in this town. To my fellow citizens, this being placed on the ballot in November does not guarantee its approval, but it will guarantee everyone has a chance to evaluate the facts and decide for themselves. If facts or important questions are left unanswered or not to your satisfaction, then vote no during November. Please don't encourage our legislators to make the decision for you now. To my neighbors and surrounding towns, a Monroe standing together governed by a people of its own electorate with similar views to you on environment and land usage is a stronger ally than, 13, 000, than a 13,000 acre shopping cart for annexation with a town board controlled by the shopper. I implore you to tell your legislators to let us vote. One piece in closing I'd like to add, and even though I'm not a member of them, I'm truly in admiration of the volunteers of United Monroe. These people are volunteers. They've mobilized and awakened our community to open and transparent government. I've always taught my kids, if you're going to bring a problem to me, you better bring an idea for a solution. As a town, we need to acknowledge United Monroe brought us a solution to a problem which we will have the chance to evaluate and ultimately decide on its merit, if given the chance by all of you. Thank you. For our next speaker, I will recognize that Assemblyman Carl Brabenick is here in the audience. Okay. 
And County Executive Steve Newhouse is also here. Okay. Next speaker. Good evening, Chairman and legislators. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm Emily Conver, Chairwoman of United Monroe. Seventy percent of speakers at last night's public hearing support a separation referendum in Monroe. Of the 30 percent who opposed, half of them live outside of Monroe, and their concerns were environmental and constitutional. I'd like to address those concerns. Preserve Hudson Valley sued Curious Joel over their annexation attempts. We used the Establishment Clause as one of our arguments, stating that changing boundaries of a municipality should not be done on the basis of religion. We lost the lawsuit. Annexation or separation of a town uses religion-neutral language. There isn't a legal leg to stand on, and by wielding the Constitution, I must ask, why now? Curious Joel has been a municipality for over 40 years. Why now, exactly when Monroe and the Monroe Woodbury School District have a chance to survive? Where were the constitutional attorneys in 2013 when Curious Joel filed their petition to annex 507 acres? Again, legal precedent shows us that the Establishment Clause doesn't hold up when dealing with municipal boundary changes, or in this case, separation. Environmental issues. In 2015, United Monroe won two seats on our town board thanks to the activism of so many amazing citizens. But in future elections, we will not have the numbers to do so. KJ is growing rapidly, as you know. Going forward, if separation does not happen, Monroe and all of its 13,000 acres will be controlled by the village of Curious Joel as they will elect our town board in all future elections. Imagine the environmental issues when 13,000 acres of Monroe land has changed to high density. Imagine the water and sewer issues which will arise from this. Separation does not preclude any leader, group, or municipality from advocating for your communities with regards to impacts as a result of KJ growth. Whether we separate or not, your activism and advocacy does not need to change. Curious Joel filed a petition to separate last fall, taking 382 acres. United Monroe leaders asserted ourselves and asked for a seat at the table. We weren't invited. We asserted ourselves. No one else did. Our involvement in these discussions led to 56 acres of land instead of 382. In Woodbury, you have elected boards who can vote no to any future annexation attempts by KJ. You have control over your government. Monroe doesn't have that. We have been fighting, walking door to door, getting petitions signed, fundraising, and rallying for years. No other town has had to do this. We have for our survival. We in Monroe share a school district with Woodbury, parts of Chester, Blooming Grove, and Tuxedo. If Monroe goes down, we all go down. It's in everyone's interest to have a strong, independent Monroe. The alternative to separating is a KJ-controlled town of Monroe, which will happen in the next election. The choice is easy. I implore you, vote yes to allow the people of Monroe to decide on separation. The alternative is knowing that you contributed to the status quo, which is unbearable, unsustainable, and not in the overall public interest. Thank you for your time and attention. Good evening. My name is Christine Manson. I've been a resident of Monroe for 45 years. We have with us over 500 letters that we'd like to present to you that volunteers went out and got signed by members of Orange County. I'd like to read that letter for you right now. I am a registered voter living in the town of blank. I encourage you to support Monroe's residents' right to decide their own collective future. Please vote in favor of placing the referendum on November's general election ballot which would allow Monroe voters to decide if the village of Curious Joel should separate from Monroe. Under their agreement to separate from Monroe with just 56 additional acres, Curious Joel made legal commitments to keep their school district boundaries the same as their new town boundaries, withdraw their appeal of a possible 507 acre annexation from Monroe, Refrain from approving annexation from neighboring communities into Curious Joel for 10 years. 
If Curious Joel reigns in Monroe, they will have more than half the town's registered voters by 2021. That means that growing village of Curious Joel would choose the winner of every town election and permanently control the Monroe Town Council, the Monroe Planning Board, and the Monroe Zone and Board of Appeals. With control of these boards, the Curious Joel block would be free to establish high density zoning throughout Monroe's 13,000 acres. There would no longer be a clear boundary between Curious Joel and all the other communities adjacent to Monroe. An influx of non-public school families into Monroe will ensure the problems that we see in the East Ramapo School District in Rockland County. Allowing Monroe residents to vote for separation would give them control of the planning and zoning within their town and protect the future of Monroe Woodbury School Districts. Please put this referendum on the ballot to let Monroe voters decide the future of our town. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gary or Jean, you want to take the letters? You want to take those letters? Gary, you can probably come up right here. The next speakers will be Jeff Manson, Valerie Hebel, and Stephen Gornstein. Good evening, Jeff Manson, lifelong Town of Monroe resident. Um, I'm here tonight to speak to you about my neighbors, all of my neighbors. Now, the issue that's before you is a very personal issue for us. So I'm gonna to speak to you very personally. Um, people person doesn't go far enough to describe someone like me. I mean, I'm downright gregarious. I'm the kind of person that when I say damn glad to meet you, I really mean it. So, a few years ago, I had to get a job, a second job, to help support my kids through college and all that stuff. I picked a job at one of our local retailers, and they started me as a cashier. So every three minutes, I got to meet somebody new. I was in my glory. And I'll tell you a little secret. One of the reasons that I chose the place that I applied to was, I was kind of hoping that I would get to meet some of my neighbors who lived in KJ. Because, like I said, I've lived here all my life. And there's not necessarily a lot of opportunity to do that. And so I have. I've met lots and lots of wonderful people all throughout my community, my neighbors. And some of those neighbors live in KJ. And they're wonderful people. One of my favorite customers, and my downright funniest customer, happens to live in KJ. And his wife and his daughter are so gracious. When my wife had surgery a couple of years ago, you know, they always took the time to make sure that she was okay. They always asked about her. You know, like you do with a neighbor. My point is this. When it comes to the future here, we've had decades of trying to live together in one town. There's two groups that choose, that would like to live very differently. Right? They have different goals, different dreams. Neither one is good or bad. They're just very different. And while we've tried to make it work, we haven't found a way to do that as one community. But for the first time, with the help of some of you, there's been communication. There's been compromise, negotiation, and possibly, for the first time, a solution, a way to move forward. And what I'm asking you, what my neighbors are asking you, is give us the opportunity as neighbors to make that decision. Please vote yes. Thank you. Valerie, you can pull that down a little bit if you want. Uh, everyone has spoken so eloquently, and I just have a few words. I'm asking you to vote no, not because I don't think that everybody has valid reasons. I've lived in the town of Woodbury for over 30 years. I have two children that went to the Monroe Woodbury schools. I understand the frustration of the non-Hasidic residents in the town of Monroe. However, I'm, I am asking the legislature to vote no to allow the referendum to go forward. 
This agreement was hashed out only between United Monroe and KJ without consideration of Woodbury. This agreement does not prevent annexation attempts in Woodbury or other outside communities. In addition, there are plenty of Hasidim that live outside the borders of this new town. And so their attempt to make inroads in taking over other communities will not be prevented by this deal. And do not forget that Woodbury is also in the Monroe Woodbury School District. So the fears that people have will not be assuaged by this deal. Also, I heard no mention of the people that are not Hasidic that live within the borders of this new town. They will no longer have access to a public school in their own community. Plus, their taxes will inevitably go up. I also strongly believe that this is unconstitutional. And even if the town is approved, there will be federal lawsuits filed that may go all the way to the Supreme Court, just as the separation of the school districts did years ago. So the hope of doing away with lawsuits is a pipe dream. I strongly recommend that the legislators vote no. Thank you. Good evening, Stephen Gordonstein, town of Monroe. <clears throat> the people of Monroe have been facing an ever-increasing, confusing, and all-encompassing problem over the past few years. A problem <clears throat> not caused by us, but foisted upon us to deal with. I came to the public hearing last night with an opinion, but was open to hearing all sides and attitudes expressed by my neighbors. There were many informative and valuable opinions expressed, which could cause one to go back and forth from a yes to a no or a no to a yes on your vote. I agree that there has not been enough information out there for a truly informed decision. I could agree that maybe we should slow things down. I agree that allowing this process to move forward enables an unconstitutional community to unrightly gain more of a foothold and more power. I can also understand that communities feel that Monroe is kicking the can down the road in their direction. I can also foresee that down the road we might say, regrettably, what were we thinking? But the problem at hand for the people of Monroe needs to be dealt with now before the situation becomes more egregious and further complicated and out of control. I feel that slowing down this process will stall the positive and constructive efforts and maybe never come to fruition in time to rectify this problem. <clears throat> the people of Monroe should not be in the position to challenge the constitutionality of his municipal arrangements. That should be taken on by the county, state, and federal governments. The people of Monroe must be concerned immediately with their own future and encourage other communities to form and energize their own grassroots organizations as United Monroe has done for the people of Monroe. The county legislature must vote yes to allow us to evaluate and take charge of our own future. Currently, with the unfortunate negative climate that this situation has engendered in our community, some cons some constructive Something constructive has to, has to take place now. The outcome may only have a temporary solution, but something is better than nothing. If a political ceasefire can create a few years of a better climate, which might lead to better understanding and communication for the future, certainly it is worth the try. Give us a chance to work toward that by voting yes. I'm tired of the fighting, wasted energy, angst, and negative feeling that rule over the atmosphere of Monroe. The future needs a lot of work. This might be a good beginning. Thank you. The next speaker is Donald G. Nickel, followed by Michael Sturthouse, followed by Joel Petlin. Good evening, and uh, thank you for your consideration of this important topic. Uh, my name is Donald Nickel. Uh, I'm speaking as an agent for the petitioners herein, and also as the uh, attorney, village attorney for the village of Curious Joel. Uh, you've heard from a number of people that uh, uh, claim that there's an unconstitutional village or that this new town of Palm Tree would be unconstitutional. That is incorrect. You heard from a litigant in one of the cases who uh, lost making that challenge. That view is, in fact, a correct view. 
What I'd like to do this evening is uh, you know, give you a simple and clear view so you can feel very comfortable that what is proposed here is fully constitutional in the United States. Uh, I speak as a constitutional scholar. I speak as someone who has most of my career represented local governments, many towns and villages in this and neighboring counties. And as someone who has represented many churches and other religious establishments in challenging governmental action, limiting their constitutional rights. It should, it's an issue I'm very concerned about and very informed about. And it's relatively simple. Our Constitution in the First Amendment has two very important clauses with respect to religion. First is that the government will make no law with respect to the establishment of a religion, the establishment clause. And that says we can't do actions that further religion. But it also has what we call the free exercise clause. The government may not prohibit the free exercise of religion. And you need to consider both. Uh, there's been people who overstate one who will trap you into making the mistake of violating the other clause. I would urge you not to do that. Our United States Supreme Court, in a case, in fact, involving the school district here in uh, Curious Joel, said this. Religious people, or groups of religious people, cannot be denied the opportunity to exercise the rights of citizens simply because of their religious affiliations or commitments. That means the people of Curious Joel have a right to exercise their rights as citizens. They have a right to petition you like any other citizen of the United States. Every, the people of Monroe have the same right, the people of Orange County have the same right, and it should not be denied. As I, I mentioned earlier, actually the constitutionality of the vig, village of Curious Joel has been litigated twice and in both cases resulting in upholding the constitutionality. There were a number of cases regarding the constitutionality of the Curious Joel School District uh, formed by litigation, excuse me, by legislation from the state of New York, our state legislature. They didn't get it right a couple of times, but it gave us a lot of view into this issue. And I heard Thank the you, bill. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Thank you uh, for allowing me to speak. My name is Michael Sturthaus. Uh, I am also an attorney uh, with the law firm of White, Menostrum, and Hannah. I serve as special counsel to the village of Curious Joel for environmental and municipal law issues, specifically issues often related to Seeker. I've been asked to comment this evening in response to certain comments made by others last evening that your action is both subject to Seeker and that the legislature is compelled to issue a positive declaration and complete an environmental impact statement before it determines whether the, petition, whether the petition for the formation of the town is sufficiently adequate to present the proposition to the voters of Monroe in November. It has been the position of the village of Curious Joel that granting the Article 5 petition allowing the electorate to vote on town formation is not an action subject to review under Seeker. The formation of a new town is really no different than the statutory process in establishing a village under village law, an action that is not subject to review under Seeker. Just as with the town's role in review of the petition for the establishment of a village, the county's role here is to ensure that the petition is adequate and complete in order to allow the electors of the town to decide the substantive issue of whether they desire a division of the town and creation of a new town. Specifically, the county's review of an Article 5 petition is not in action under Seeker because it does not meet the definitional criteria set forth in the Seeker regulations. Granting the petition and providing for the submission of a proposition to the electors is not a project or a physical activity. Likewise, it does not require the county to directly undertake or fund the proposed town formation nor does it require the county to approve the formation of a town, but only to conduct the hearing and to determine to submit the petition to the electors of the town of Monroe. The county's determination does not entitle or otherwise authorize the formation of the town. 
except to the extent that it permits the electors to vote on the issue. Thus, the county's determination to grant the petition is not an action under seeker. As I said before, this circumstance is very similar to the incorporation process that courts have held does not trigger review pursuant to seeker. For example, in a case close to home, uh, in the case of O'Keefe versus Benelli, the Orange County Supreme Court held that where the proposed incorporation merely incorporates a separate government for some of the residents there of Blooming Grove, but does not itself result in any construction or the commencement of new projects within the boundaries of the new village, compliance with Seeker is not required. In fact, in the recent formations of both the village of South Blooming Grove and the village of Woodbury, both village formations did not conduct a seeker review. While all these cases dispel the applicability of seeker to the village formation process, the same reasoning rationally applies to the formation of a town. Contrary to comments made by others, the town formation process is clearly distinguishable from an annexation, which is subject to seeker. Specifically, seeker expressly characterizes the annexation of over 100 acres as a seeker type one action. No such characterization or Thank other Thank you, next speaker. If I may, some? No, you may not, sorry. Sorry about that. You lawyers like to go on a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Don, too. Good evening. But you can submit your comments in writing. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Joel Petlin, the superintendent of the Curious Joel School District, where I've worked for the past 25 years. I wanted to make a few points regarding the resolution now before you. First, I, I want to extend my appreciation to all the parties that were involved in drafting this historic peace accord, which forms the basis for the creation of a new town. Compromise is difficult, especially in an environment that encourages continued conflict. But peaceful coexistence is always the best path. In this case, I would argue that an amicable divorce is far better than the tumultuous 40-year marriage that Monroe and Carrie's Joel have endured. The precedent for this divorce is undoubtedly the creation of the Curious Joel School District in 1990. With that act, supported by the Monroe Woodbury School District, we solved a major issue that is now brewing in my home community of East Ramapo. The separation of public school districts with different goals and missions allowed both the KJ and MW school districts to thrive. To this day, I have a terrific working relationship with the MW board and superintendent sharing information and assisting in programs and services. In fact, last night, I sat with Elsie Rodriguez and her administrative team in a very hot auditorium as a sign that we continue to work together to benefit our students. To that end, the Curious Joel Board of Education will be voting next week on a resolution to alter our school district boundaries to be coterminous with the boundaries of the town of Palm Tree. Our research indicates a small tax impact for both communities after accounting for the cost of the provision of student services to the residents. Transportation and special education for the 220 acres will become the responsibility of the Curious Joel School District at a cost that will be somewhat offset by the new tax revenues. I am pleased that we have reached this point to be able to offer hope and promise to the parents who reside in the Monroe Woodbury School District. I'm fully aware of the greatness of their program, and I'm glad that they'll be able to continue in the furtherance of their mission without fear of a growing population that has different needs and desires for educating their youth. I therefore urge the legislature to support the creation of the town of Palm Tree for the sake of peace and harmony and for the Monroe families and students that deserve a quality education. Their future is in your hands. Thank you. The next speaker is Eileen Ruddy, followed by Suzanne Adler, followed by Tom Ammons. Good evening. My name is Eileen Ruddy, and I live in the town of Monroe. I moved to this town nine years ago from Westchester County. I moved here for the semi-rural feel of the town. I can count the number of cars that go past my house daily on one hand. I enjoy the peace and quiet of the woods that surround my home. I love the noises the tree fogs make in the quiet of the night. I imagine that my neighbors in Curious Joel enjoy living in close proximity to their family shopping and their houses of worship. 
I imagine they enjoy street lights and sidewalks that protect them from the busy streets filled with cars. Many have said that the separation of the town of Monroe from the village of Curious Joel will have far-reaching effects on the rest of Orange County. I ask you, hasn't the village been impacting the county for years now? This is nothing new. The population of KJ is growing and will continue to grow. That's a fact. Their impact on Orange County and the region will continue to grow regardless of whether the town separates or not. Regarding the constitutionality of a new town, I believe that a precedent had always already been set regarding that. KJ has been its own village for 40 years. Then there's the Curious Joel Public School District, which, by the way, has worked out very nicely for both the citizens of KJ and for the people of the Monroe Woodbury School District. There is no guarantee that that will continue if separation does not happen. This is another reason my husband and I moved here was in fact for the outstanding school district. I have never had a child in the Monroe Woodbury School District and I never will, but I understand the value of a great education, great arts and science programs, great athletics and after school activities. We moved here because I knew that a strong school district meant strong home values. Without separation, what will the town of Monroe look like in 10 or 20 years? I'll tell you, it will look like East Ramapo, a once Cadillac school district brought to its knees by a school board that has failed the public school children. A public school district where bleachers are falling apart and left unusable, usable, where schools are not properly maintained, where children are left without the opportunities for AP classes, after school activities, athletics, and the arts. So, it would seem that you, all of you there, the legislative body of Orange County, hold the keys to the future of the Monroe Woodbury School District. Your vote in September will determine what the future of Monroe and the Monroe Woodbury School District looks like. If we become the next East Ramapo, it will be squarely on your shoulders because you chose not to allow a referendum on the ballot in November. Thank you. Hi, good evening, my name is Suzanne Adler and I'm a resident of that town of Chester. I lived in the MW community for 40 years. I attended schools here from the first grade to the 12th. After college, I returned home and began my teaching career at Monroe Woodbury, and I've been teaching there for 22 years. My husband and I are currently raising our five children here and plan to have them all graduate from Monroe Woodbury. I'm active in my church and I volunteer in many organizations, so to say that I'm invested in this community is an understatement. In all my years of living here, I've always appreciated living alongside the acidic community. It gave me, then my children, the opportunity to learn about acceptance of all people of different cultures. Just as I want people to be tolerant of me and my choices, I live my life the same. And I can test to the many people I know in this community feel the same way I do. However, over the past five years, I've seen how the people of Monroe have become fearful that their way of life has become increasingly threatened. When I cast my vote in Chester, I never feel as though my vote doesn't make a difference, regardless of the outcome. My neighbors in Monroe and Harriman no longer feel that way. How disheartening to know that their votes make little difference in a few years, possibly none. The residents of Kairos Joel fully exercise their right to vote. They cast their ballots for things and people that will help them put forward their vision. The problem is that Monroe, as it stands, is one town with two visions. And soon enough, only one vision will be able to be seen. I understand the frustration of others in the MW community and beyond. We all worry about environmental impacts and we worry about taxes. However, these are matters that will need to be addressed regardless of the separation. But at the core of it, this is a Monroe issue, and unless you lift their feelings of helplessness and their voices not being heard, it's hard to understand. While some say this is all moving too fast, those who have been fighting for years say it's about time. I truly believe that an independent, strong Monroe could be the best advocate and ally to others in Orange County, and particularly those in Monroe Woodbury. They can work alongside other towns to maintain, this, our, maintain our strong district and make a stronger Orange County. I'm also looking forward to the day when we, people in both communities can pass each other in shops and around the lakes and look to one another with even more respect, more acceptance, and even friendship. 
I believe that once the battle for land and ultimately our schools are out of the equation, this will be more likely to happen. Monroe has been divided for very long. Regardless of how it started, the time to resolve it is now. Please give the citizens of Monroe what the rest of us have, a voice and a vote in their own future. They deserve the right for that opportunity. And to quote Gloria Steinman, decisions are best made by the people affected, them, affected by them. Let Monroe vote. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Ammons, a longtime resident of Monroe. I'd like to start by thanking the hardworking members of United Monroe for their grit and determination that brought us all here together for this momentous vote. It is a vote which may determine whether the village of Kiris Joel becomes the county of Kiris Joel. In the words of the great American philosopher Yogi Berra, if you see a fork in the road, take it. Unfortunately, with, with his wisdom, we cannot solve the issue before us. It's a binary outcome, either yes or no, and we need a yes. At the heart of the matter is a clash of lifestyle and worlds. We who live in Monroe and Orange County have all aspired to having a home with some land while enjoying our personal interpretation of the American dream. We desire, we desire these goals all while respecting the rights of our neighbors who share those common goals. An integral part of being a good citizen and neighbor is sharing the available natural and governmental resources for common good. There is a challenging and obvious trend that we must address. The expected birth rate of the KJ population combined potentially with the mass migration will undoubtedly accelerate the growth of an already dominant voting bloc. These additional votes will only seal our fate. It's a fate in which we will have absolutely no control or influence over our future. We did not move here to adapt to a lifestyle we do not share. We're here to respect one another and permit the quiet enjoyment of our properties. With the inexorable rise of KJ's population, the infrastructure and environmental issues must be dealt with no matter what the outcome. A yes vote is vital to our personal dignity as compliant, tax-paying citizens. The future of our homes and the well-being of our families are in jeopardy. The desire to determine our own fate has nothing whatsoever to do with religion. It has everything to do with the equitable distribution of county resources and the respect for the preservation of a lifestyle we have grown accustomed to over the years. As a former resident of Monroe once said, I did not leave Monroe, Monroe left me. We do not want that quote repeated over and over again. We need a yes vote for the referendum so we may continue to enjoy the Monroe we have come to love. I'd like to close with the opening quote from Joseph Berger's book, The Pious Ones, which stands for Asida. There are two levels in the study of Torah. Torah of the mind, Torah of the heart. The mind cogitates, comprehends, and understands. The heart feels. I hope your minds and hearts are open enough to vote yes. Thank you. The next speaker is Patricia McHugh, followed by Brian Bohan, followed by Brendan Coyne. Good evening. My name is Patricia McHugh, and I have lived in the town of Monroe for 24 years. Thank you for letting me speak, and thank you for listening to what I have to say tonight regarding the opportunity to vote on the possible separation of the town of KJ from the town of Monroe. There are many critical issues involved with this separation. I am here to speak about the one nearest and dearest to my heart, and that is the education of our future generations. I have been a public school teacher for 34 years, and I have dedicated my life to teaching. I am greatly concerned about the education of the future generations of young people who will be attending the Monroe Woodbury schools, because if the Monroe Woodbury Board of Education is ever completely controlled by Hasidic men, as is the current East Ramapo School Board, you can expect our wonderful school system to become totally destroyed. What does that mean? That means generations of children will be denied the right to a decent education. It means they will be denied the ability to secure entrance into colleges and other schools of higher education. 
and it means they will be denied the ability to obtain good, well-paying jobs so they can support themselves and their families. If you do not give the people of Monroe the opportunity to vote to separate from KJ, you will be destroying the educational opportunities for all future generations. Our children, your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren deserve the right to the best education we can provide them. A vote to give Monroe the chance to vote on this separation is a vote to save our schools. I am begging you to vote yes. Thank you for your time. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Brian Bohan. Uh, my wife and family have been residents of both uh, Monroe and Blooming Grove, and I'd like to thank you uh, for your time today and uh, Mr. Newhouse for coming down. Um, I'm going to come in at a different angle, and I think it's one of these things that's just uh, pretty basic and pretty simple. Last night and tonight, one of the main sources of anxiety for people coming up to the microphone is water, water and wastewater. There's not enough water. Uh, from my understanding, from what I read and what I see on TV, in the next couple of generations, water is going to be the next petroleum because there's not enough fresh water. Right now, not tomorrow, not five years from now, right now, you don't need an engineer's report. There are people in Blooming Grove who are coming back from vacation who don't have enough water pressure. In South Blooming Grove, some of the fire hydrants are painted blue. You know why they're painted blue? Because they can't draw water for them. There's not enough water. And I also believe in not coming up and stating something like that and not having an answer. And the answer is very simple. Curtis Jewell spends a lot of time, i.e. with Middletown and other municipalities such as Cornwall, suing them for their right of their water. They're spending a lot of money with attorneys. Uh, a, a judge throws a case out like in Middletown and by by sunset, Curtis Jewell has their lawyers there to refile another lawsuit for that water in the well. And the same thing with Cornwall. I think it would behoove the leaders of Curtis Jewell instead of directing their money for these lawyers that come from Manhattan, i.e. I was at a uh, town board meeting in Monroe, and I couldn't believe I witnessed this, but a lawyer threatened the town board of Monroe and said, I'll take you to court, I'll take you to court, and by God, I'll bankrupt this town. I'll bankrupt you in court. There's too much money being spent on lawyers such as Middletown and uh, other areas to get their water. The solution is very simple, and uh, I hope uh, Commissioner Church and Mr. Newhouse looks at it. And my uh, point of reference is um, National Geographic on YouTube. You could check with that. But right now, with technology, and it's right across the river in New Jersey, there are water treatment plants. And right now, I know in my area, such as the Lake Ann area, there is water. No engineer's report is needed. Right now, as I talk, there is a funnel coming out onto Route 208 into a, uh, a sewer spin, and that area was once owned by, I believe it was Great Bear Water Company, but that water does not make it to specs, but people are still taking water from there, and I don't hear any medical problems or anything like that, but they don't make it to specs. This technology is not new. This technology is easily over 10 years old, and they're doing it right over here in Jersey, and <clears throat> another area. Thank you. Oh, okay, sorry. That's okay. Good evening, Orange County legislators. Thank you for your service. I am Brendan Coyne, Mayor of Cornwall and Hudson, and my village board has authorized me to speak tonight. I'm also a member of the coalition, coalition of eight towns and municipalities, which along with the Orange County has a lawsuit against the annexation. My time has been tremendous in terms of spending it on this issue, and it's been very stressful. But my message tonight is going to be very short, very simple.
regardless of how you vote on the town of Palm Tree. Starting tonight, I ask you to pledge and take measures to place meters in the Orange County Sewer District Number 1 to control growth. Don't continue to avoid this issue. See that KJ addresses its environmental problems and follows environmental laws, as all other municipalities in Orange County have to do. I thank you for your consideration. Next speaker, Daniel Richmond, followed by Mary Duffy, followed by Heather Lynch. Good evening, Chairman Brescia, members of the county legislature. My name is Dan Richmond. I'm an attorney with the law firm Zarin and Steinmetz, and it's been our honor to work with the uh, good volunteers, the hardworking volunteers of United Monroe and preserve Hudson Valley. Um, I would just like to speak briefly about um, an issue that's come up a little bit tonight, and I was also at the public hearing last night, where people said that this process was rushed through, which is hardly the case, as I think anyone familiar with this process knows this has not come from left field. This is a process that has gone on for a long time. First of all, I do want to say that it, we are actually on a very tight time frame pursuant to New York State town law, which leaves very little wiggle room. Um, I think a lot of people calling for a deferral, calling for this to be pushed off, are really trying to kill this. This is a classic case of a dream deferred being a dream denied. This is, um, this is all timed by when the election is and everything is backdated by that. Um, there's not a lot of room for that. Um, but again, as um, your counsel, as when I read has informed you, and as I'm sure you know, this petition has been before you for more than a year. Um, there have been many articles, many discussions about it, but again, this did not come out of nowhere. This was a product of the annexation process during when it, many of these issues were uh, discussed and publicly considered, and there will be further opportunity as this process unfolds, including over the next three weeks, your, uh, um, your legislature has the opportunity to consider issues related to it, and more importantly, as I, if I hope you vote yes, you, after that, the members of the community of the town of Monroe will have the opportunity to have open discussions about these issues, um, to openly you know, vet any issues they want to consider. Um, so in that spirit, I guess the time to act is now. Um, I urge you to vote yes, and I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, I didn't prepare anything, but I feel compelled to speak. My name is Mary Duffy, and I have been living in Monroe for 31 years. Uh, myself and my husband, we've raised three successful Monroe Woodbury graduates. Um, I'm just asking you that when you go to make your vote on the referendum, to please consider all the families, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> all the families and our education system here in Monroe. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you. My name is Heather Lynch, and I'm a five-year resident of Woodbury. I was able to listen to last night's comments, um, and I understand both sides presented. My fellow Woodbury residents are frightened by the precedent this new town sets. The elephant in the room is the fact that the village of Curious Joel is an exclusionary theocracy. This new town would not welcome the rest of the county. Curious Joel's political leadership are comprised only of men, men who are not responsibly openly or democratically planning their community's unsustainable growth. That being said, our neighbors in Monroe and their town government have been infiltrated by these corrupt men and their puppets. The people of Monroe have had their democracy and their rights stolen from them. Allowing this issue to go to referendum would be the ransom paid to the kidnappers of Monroe. I say pay the ransom and let Monroe free. 
Let Monroe vote. Let Monroe have the autonomy they deserve. Again, let Monroe vote. Thank you. The next speaker is Stephen Pavia, followed by Eli Sloma Cohn, followed finally by Mayor Ab Abe Weeder. Hi, um, I want to say thank you for coming tonight and last night. Thank you for your service to our, our county. Uh, my name is Steve Pavia. I am a resident of 30 years in Monroe. I own a business here in Monroe. My two children um, prospered through the Monroe Woodbury School District. They're on their way, on their path to college. And I'm very thankful that we had a chance to grow our family here in our town. I've always loved Monroe, but I really felt an emotional attachment to this town when I started realizing that my government was not representing me. Uh, I, was, I saw the election of 2013 when my, uh, the town board that existed then, it was voted in then, uh, took a divided town between the two communities of Curious Joel and Monroe, and I felt that, and, and I've witnessed disdain, condescension, and disrespect for one half of the people of our community. Uh, they were voted in by the block vote, and they proceeded for four years. Instead of bringing the two sides together, they chose to further divide the two sides. Uh, the group United Monroe, I've been affiliated with four years or longer with them. All we did for four years was try to bring the two sides to the table to discuss matters to see what we could do to find a compromise to find a way that both sides could live together as neighbors as both sides say they want to do so after all those four years of work and, and determination and diligence we've come to the point where now we leave it into your hands we've got the two sides at the table we came up with a historic agreement in make in the making and basically now we leave it up to you legislators. All we want is what all Americans deserve and, and were um, brought by our forefathers and people who died for our freedom to vote. All we want is the chance to vote for ourselves. Residents of Monroe are very smart, we're informed. We're gonna make the right decision for ourselves and I wish that you will allow us to do that. Thank you. for everybody. <clears throat> My name is Rabbi Elvia Shloy McCone. I have lived in the Kids Joel community for the last 40 years. I am proud to welcome you all, all our guests, to this facility in Beis Rachel School, where I have served as the school principal for the last 40 years. I have personally seen the growth of several generations. I educated children, their mothers, and even their grandmothers call me their principal. On this campus, we have educated all these kids, but we currently educated over four and a half thousand young women. <clears throat> anyone, anyone that knows me can confirm that I have a, I'm a strong proponent of peace, harmony, and understanding. As a community, we instill these values in the students and we teach them to respect all the people. Our faith demands that we respect our neighbors and avoid conflict. This I understand is the underlying premise of the request to create the town of Palm Tree out of the town of Monroe. The proposal will add peace and harmony to both communities 
while respecting our cultural differences. On behalf of the four and a half thousand girls that are educated in this building, I implore the county legislator to set the example and allow us to pursue a path to peace, harmony, and a mutual respect of our differences. Only by letting the voters of Monroe have a say in this issue will we be able to establish a foundation for our future generations. I beg you all to seize this opportunity and help our children. I could tell you, I'm talking in my mouth, thousands of kids that are asking peace. <clears throat> Both the future mothers of Kitty and Joe and the future parents of Monroe at this crucial time in our history. The future of Monroe is in your hands. Please vote yes. Thank you. Mayor Abe Weeder. Good evening. I am Abe Weeder, Mayor of Kirjo, of the village of Kirjo. I am pleased to welcome you, the county legislators, and all the guests of this evening. I don't want to take up too much of your presence your precious time. I just want to stress to everyone here that the village of Kirish Joel is committed to, to peaceful coexistence with all of its neighbors. And, and I ask you, honorable legislatures, join us as partners for peace, res mutual respect, and coexistence. Peace is a long time value. Your decisions, your decision on the proposal of the town of Palm Tree could lead to a historic resolution to an ongoing conflict, which would then be extended to all of our neighbors. I am confident that you will do the right by all Monroe residents and will allow Monroe to vote. Thank you very much. I want to thank each and every one of you that came tonight and show respect for the process. And again, I'm pleading with you, with you from the bottom of my heart, please vote yes for the, for the proposal. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there are no further speakers. No further speakers? Okay. I'd like to thank everyone. Once again, it was civil tonight. A lot of good, uh, passionate viewpoints here tonight. I like Mr. Gregarious back there. Everybody seemed to like his comments. Got the loud, loudest round of applause. Thank you. Um, with no other discussion, I'd like to close this public hearing. Thank you.